The weather is getting colder and there's nothing like a nice hot bowl of beef stew to warm you right up. This one comes from Jen's WW Journey. It's a crock pot beef stew and I'm going to show you how to do it coming up next. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I am a home cook and amateur baker and I am here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Now today I am doing a crock pot meal, perfect for fall, and it is a beef stew that I got from Jen's WW Journey and I will link her channel down below. She has a lot of great recipes. So she is definitely one you should be checking out. Now it looks like a lot of ingredients and I mean it kind of is, but it's a beef stew. So you have to start off with the beef. And she calls for a two pound chuck roast and I couldn't find a small chuck roast at the grocery store. So what I got was a top round steak that was about two pounds. So you can play around with it if you would like to. You don't have to stick specifically to that one if you can't find it, like I couldn't. We also have two and a half cups of beef broth and one half cup of red wine. Now the red wine is usually added to beef to enhance the flavor because the tannins in the wine tend to bring out that uh, flavor of the beef. Now tannins come from the skins of the grapes, also the seeds and the stems. And if you've ever drunk, drank, drunk, if you've ever had a red wine and it dried out your mouth and it kind of left a coating. Those are tannins. But those, those are there to help enhance the flavor. Now, tea also has tannins. So I don't know. It could be an experiment I may try at some point. If replacing red wine with like a strong brewed tea would have a similar effect and enhance the flavor. I mean, it would depend, obviously, I would go for just like a plain black tea, um, but it might be interesting to try. Who knows, someday. Anyway, we also have one pound of russet potatoes. Now in her recipe, she calls for five Yukon gold potatoes chopped into bite-sized pieces. I already had russets on hand, so I didn't want to go out of my way. I wanted to use some of those up. And I estimated it was about a pound. And when I put it into the recipe builder, one pound matched the points and bites that she got on her recipe. There is one onion chopped. Now in her recipe, she chopped like really big pieces of carrot and onion and celery. I prefer smaller pieces, like my carrots are cut up like this. And if you know me, you know I don't go for the whole carrot. I very seldom have regular carrots. I usually have baby carrots on hand. And for something like this, they are much easier. You're just cutting them into pieces. You don't have to like really try to get that oddly shaped carrot into cubes. So I prefer baby carrots, but you could use regular carrots. She calls for three carrots peeled and chopped. I'm going with about eight ounces of baby carrots. That's half of one of those little pound bags. And you can play around with that. It's a zero bite, zero point food. So you can fluctuate a little bit and you don't have to worry about it. it helps to bulk it up a little. We also have one red pepper that I've diced as well as three stalks of celery. She calls for two, but mine were kind of small. So I use three. Just half a cup of frozen peas. There is a she calls for two teaspoons of garlic or two cloves of garlic, which is equal to two teaspoons. 
I went for a tablespoon because we do like garlic here. There is a quarter cup of flour because that's what's going to help thicken the broth up into a stew as we move along. And at the end, I will tell you if it's not thick enough for you, how you can make it a little thicker. There is one tablespoon of oil. This will just add a little richness to the stew. And I did it with and without, and it came out to the same bites, same points. So I figured adding it would help with some of the texture, help with some of the mouthfeel, as they call it. There is two teaspoons of thyme here, dried thyme, and a tablespoon of dried parsley. Now for salt and pepper, she just says salt and pepper listed because it's to taste. I'm starting with just a teaspoon of pepper to go in. We can always season it later once we taste it. And I will add in some pepper. If you know, if you've watched this channel, you know Paul likes pepper, hates spicy food, but loves pepper. I, I don't know. Anyway, one change that I'm making and not on purpose. Jen calls for two tablespoons of tomato paste. And I swore I had tomato paste in my pantry, if not in my fridge. And I really should have checked to make sure I did, because I did not. So what I am doing is I'm replacing that with two tablespoons of GU steak sauce. So I won't add really any change of the bites or points to this. It's like a sugar-free steak sauce. So I'm using two tablespoons of the steak sauce instead of the tomato paste because I think that'll just enhance the beefy flavor. I was planning on using some GU's barbecue sauce. So that's another option if you don't have tomato paste or if you don't want to buy tomato paste. Maybe you just get tomato paste and it sits around. I know they sell it in tubes, but the tubes are so much more expensive than the little cans. I, I can't bring myself to spend like $3 on a tube of tomato paste when I can get a can of the same size or more for like 89 cents. Can't do it. So. Anyway, if you don't have or don't want to use the tomato paste, there are options. And so I'm going with the GU steak sauce. Okay, so we've gone over all the ingredients, I believe, yes. So let me move some things around so that I can get started. We're really just gonna throw it all in the crock pot and we're done. So I'll be right back to throw it in. All right, so what we are going to do now, I have my crock pot lined with a liner. You don't have to do that. You don't even have to really spray it if you don't want to, but it's much easier cleanup for me to put in the liner and just be able to wipe out any condensation from the bowl rather than cleaning it all, scrubbing it and whatnot. I just like to make my life easier. So the first thing I'm going to throw in is I always put the potatoes in first. If there are potatoes, obviously. I mean, I always put the potatoes in first because I like them to sit underneath the meat. So when the meat's cooking, it'll drip some of those juices down onto it. That's just my preference. You don't have to do it. You can just throw it all in as you want. Now you may have noticed when I had it sitting here with all the other ingredients, I had it soaking in water. That was just to keep them from drying out as I prepped everything and got things ready for the video. You don't have to soak them in water, but if you're gonna be doing other things, and if you don't want them to brown before you are ready to use them, then it's a good idea to put them in some cool water as you're prepping other things. So potatoes in, then goes the beef. Now these are, cut into bite-sized pieces, about an inch or so. And um, it's not like a precise thing. You don't have to get measurements out or something. Just what looks like a bite size to you. Um, that's fine. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with the other veggies, the carrots, the peppers and celery, and the onions. Let's go in with the onions here. And I don't even care that the onions haven't fallen separated, you know, fallen apart, come separated that easily. As they're stewing, they will definitely come apart. Let's do the peas. I'm going to add in the flour, and then I'm going to stir it up a little bit. Now, the flour, as this cooks, is going to um, help to thicken the broth and the wine, as I said. And I'm not stirring it up crazy. I'm just going to toss it with the vegetables on top. I don't necessarily want to disturb the beef and the potatoes. And once I pour the liquid on, it's all going to seep down anyway, so I'm not too worried about being precise here. The garlic, the tomato paste, or in my case, steak sauce. Gonna drizzle the oil all over. Now, like I said, this is just gonna help give it a little extra richness. If you wanted to leave it out, you could, but like I said, it's not gonna change the bites or points. Gonna go in with the salt. And the thyme. And the parsley. I mean, this is as easy as it gets. Now I'm going to just crack on some pepper. Like I said, Paul really likes pepper. And beef is definitely a meat that can take a lot of pepper, like the steak au poivre. I don't know if I'm even pronouncing that right, but it's basically pepper encrusted steak. So definitely enhances steak goes very well. So now in goes the beef broth and the red wine. And some of the wine may have settled a little bit. There's like some pieces, I can smell the, the wine in there. It'll definitely add a little richness to this. So I'm just gonna toss a little bit on the top just to move things around, get things coated. And then on goes the lid. Now Jen, in her video, which I will have linked below, she cooks this on low for eight hours. But I don't usually get up that early that I have eight hours before dinner to prep everything and get it into a crock pot. So I am going to do it on high for about three to four hours. Because if you're cooking on low, it will be about seven to eight hours. And if you're cooking on high, it'll be about half that, so three to four. You could also, like I did with the pumpkin chili recipe, take it from the crock pot to the stove top, just play around with it. What I would do there is cook the beef first, coated with the flour, and then take it out, then do the veggies, like the onions first, then throw in the potatoes, and then the carrots, and then bring everything together and cook it for probably an hour at least. But that's just an option if you wanted to try to take it to the stovetop if your time was even more limited. Because right now it is one o'clock. So by the time this is done, it will be about dinner time. So I'm gonna set it on high, three to four hours. I'll check it at three and stir things around. And then when it's done, I will be back to show you the finished product. Okay, so our four hours of slow cooking our beef stew is up. And I'm just going to check 
the consistency of the broth. It is a bit thin for a stew. We did add some flour, but apparently not enough. Now, in her recipe, Jen does say you could do a cornstarch slurry where you mix uh, one part cornstarch with two parts of water, stir that up, and then put it in here. The problem is that would bring the bites and points up to six instead of five. And you know I'm stingy with my bites and points. So what I'm going to do instead is add in a little bit of xanthan gum. Now this, someone just turned me on to this when I did my um, Walden Farms taste test and found that the mayo, the chipotle mayo, which the flavor was good, but it was not thick like a mayo should be, suggested I put some xanthan gum in it. I did, and it definitely fixed it up. So I'm just going to add just a half a teaspoon and then see how that does. And this won't change the bites it will change the calories by like five. So I'm just gonna sprinkle that all over and then stir that in and just see how it thickens up if I feel like I need to add a little bit more. I guess a lot of people who have gluten allergies use xanthan gum because they can't use flour to thicken things. Um, but I've had very little experience using it. So it does seem a little thicker though. Definitely got a little thicker. I might go another half teaspoon. But let me double check and see if that will affect the bite or points. That actually thickened up pretty well for a half a teaspoon. So let me check on what adding another half teaspoon would do. Be right back. Okay, so I checked, and if I went up another half teaspoon, it would bring me up to where I was trying to avoid the cornstarch by adding another bite. But if I add just a quarter teaspoon more, and I wanna make sure I'm being precise here, because I don't wanna mess myself up. But if I add just another quarter teaspoon, that doesn't affect the bites. And if a half a teaspoon thickened it up that nicely, I'm sure this extra quarter will do the trick. But if you're not as stingy with your bites and points as I am, you can easily do the cornstarch slurry. Actually, if I had not put the oil in here, I could have probably gotten away with putting the cornstarch slurry in and not having it be an issue. But yeah, that, it's, it's still a little thin, but nowhere near what it was when it first came out because it was more like a soup at that point. So yeah, this is thickened up nicely for me. Has a nice little sheen to it too. I may try to use this for a gravy and see how that works. But that works pretty well. All right, so. I had also tried, when I saw how thin it was, to partially cover it like this, but that didn't seem to be helping much. But I think that xanthan gum really did the trick. So this gives you eight servings. See, on Jen's WW Journey, she does the points for all of the plans, whereas I usually only do blue because that matches the iTrack Bites Better Balance plan that I am on. But I do have points for all plans here. So for blue and green, this would be five points. For the iTrack Bites Better Balance plan, it's five bites. For purple, I think because they get potatoes free, I believe it would be three points. Now the calories would be 286. The fat would be 7.6 grams. The carbs would be 21.3 grams. 
and the protein would be 28.7 grams. So a nice hearty dish for you in the chilly fall weather. And I hope that you will give this a try. If you liked this video, I hope you will give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and you are looking for recipes that can help you on a weight loss journey, whether it's I track bites, WW, calorie counting, or macro counting. Hit the notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of a video. And comment down below if beef stew is one of your go-tos, if you've tried other versions of a WW beef stew and what you thought of those. This one is very good. I have had it before and I do enjoy it very much. And also share this video if there's anyone you know who might find this interesting or helpful. Now I will leave the link to Jen's channel down below to that recipe specifically. And then from there you can go to her website and print it out. And for any of the recipes that I have made, you can check out my blog. The link is down below. And I often have people asking how they can print them out from my blog. And all you have to do is like copy the entire recipe, right click, and you can either copy to save it into your computer in your Word document or whatever you use for that kind of thing. Or you can just hit print and it'll print that out for you. And you can also follow me on social media. Here is my Instagram handle, as well as the two Facebook groups that I am part of. One is mine, Recipes with Roy, and the other is Finding Our Way, W-E-I-G-H, and that I co-admin with Jennifer Lynn from the Jennifer Lynn channel, as well as Brie Coleman from Balancing Life with Brie. So I hope you will join us over there. There's a lot of great people in those groups, lots of tips, tricks, recipes, what have you, and also support. So it is time for us to have dinner. So I'm going to go and share this with Paul. So until next time, bye.